Hey YouTube, my name is Justin and I flip stuff online for a profit as a side hustle. I've been selling on eBay um, since the 90s, really, since the late 90s when I was in high school. Back then you'd have to wait for the buyer to send you a personal check in the mail and you'd have to wait for that check to clear and then once it cleared, uh, you would send them their item. Clearly, uh, things are very different now, thankfully. Uh, and I've been selling off and on you know, since then. Um, but it wasn't until about you know three or four years ago, 2019, 2020, that I started to take this uh, a little bit more seriously. I, I love going to garage sales and thrift stores. Uh, I love finding a deal and just finding weird stuff. And um, I thought like, hey, could I actually turn this into a real like side hustle, something that makes real money? So that's what I've been focused on for the last three or four years. And I didn't, you know, it, it took me a long time to, to grow it. I started with basically nothing and, and where I'm at today, uh, I'm pretty happy with, you know, I keep about a thousand items in stock uh, at any given moment. And um, I sell across all categories. I don't have like a particular niche that I focus on. I just try to sell anything that's going to make money. That's my niche. Uh, and I end up grossing about 80 to $90,000 on average per year. That's gross sales, not not uh, net. Net ends up being about 60% of that. So that's where I'm at now. I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, there's people that are doing a lot better, but I'm happy with where I'm at today. And I was able to grow it to be where it's at today by focusing on building systems for the different parts of the reselling workflow. And so you know, when you're reselling, it's like you have to have good systems for sourcing new inventory and buying good stuff that's going to sell and it's going to be worthwhile. And you have to have good systems for listing so it doesn't take hours to list stuff. And you have to have good systems for packing and shipping so that you're not spending a bunch of time doing that. And so I focused on each part of that reselling workflow and building little systems that make it super easy to manage uh, the different parts of that process. I started, um, you know, three or four years ago, I just used like these big plastic bins or totes and they would just sit on my office room floor and they were labeled A1, A2, A3, things like that. And I would just, every time I listed something, um, I would dump it into one of those bins. And then in the actual eBay listing title at the very end, I would put A1 or B2 or whichever bin it was in. Uh, that's before I knew that you could use custom SKUs. And so custom SKUs on eBay allow you to store um, data on individual items that only you can see. So the buyer's not gonna see it. Um, but you can put that location uh, or that bin number in the custom SKU um, so that when something sells, it shows up and you know exactly where to pull it. And so that was helpful um, when I eventually learned that. But eventually I just grew out of the system, right? The bins, I actually didn't like the, the plastic bins. They were too big, which meant they held too much inventory. They got too heavy to move around. And it was difficult to like dig through and find the actual like thing that I was looking for. I graduated from using these bins to using banker boxes. And so banker boxes, I think are like what lawyers use. And I guess bankers, because they're called bankers boxes, like for paperwork. Um, I use them to store inventory and they work really well. Actually, they're a perfect size. They're not too big. They're not too small. They fit really well on shelves. I just like take off the lid. I don't use that at all. Um, and that's what I've been using um, for the last three or I guess two years um, to actually hold the actual inventory. And then I don't use the custom SKUs or anything on the eBay side to actually store that location information. I use my own inventory uh, and sales data management system that I built on Airtable. I'm not going to get into talking about Airtable a ton here because I have a separate video. I'll link, link it in the, the description below. You can watch it there. Um, but anyway, so I evolved into using these banker boxes and um, I got real shelves. I was no longer putting them on the floor. Um, and I started to scale that out, right? And so I had a few shelves and you know half do or a dozen or so banker boxes, and they just got bigger, bigger, bigger until where I'm at today. And how I organize these banker boxes is I've got um, so basically I think I've got like ten shelves now, if I'm if I'm right. And on each shelf uh, or each like level of what do you call it, like the layer of the shelf. Um, uh, holds two or three banker boxes. And so, you, you know, I end up getting about 10 to 15 banker boxes per shelf and at 10 shelves, so fit probably 50 banker boxes. And so I'm using all of that to store those thousand, roughly thousand items. Um, and if you look here, each banker box has a little code on it. And so this one, like A3A. So basically that first A, that stands for which shelfing, shelving unit it's on. So this is shelf A, this is shelf B, this is shelf C. Um, and then the second uh, uh, right after A, then it'll be like the number. So three or two, that stands for the different sh actual shelf that it's on, on that shelving unit. And so it's just like the floors in a, um, in a building. So shelf, or shelf one, shelf two, shelf three, shelf four, all the way up to five. Uh, and then the last, uh, letter is, uh, corresponds to the actual box on that shelf. And so if I have two boxes on that shelf, I'll have an A and a B box. So I'll have like A3A or A3B. Um, so that's, that's how I actually, um, 
label all of my boxes. And so when I list something, uh, I just go and um, list it and then I put it in my inventory management system and I get I associate a location with it and I say, oh, this one's an A3A so that when it sells, I pull it up in my inventory management system and I can go find it really quickly. So it works out pretty well. Um, these shelves, by the way, I, I buy them at Lowe's. Um, they cost, uh, usually I wait for them to go on sale and they, they cost like 80 to $90 when they're on sale. When they're not on sale, they're like 100, 150. Uh, they can be kind of expensive, but they go on sale pretty frequently. So keep an eye out. Uh, don't, don't pay full price for them. <clears throat> so that's about it. You know, also in my basement, I have like uh, areas, my little pr uh, area for testing and cleaning and processing inventory and actually listing it. I have my station here for like uh, shipping and, and, and all the packaging materials and weighing and all that. And I have my photography station and all that. I'm not going to do a full tour and a full, just full uh, run through of all that. That'll probably come in a separate video, but, uh, but yeah, hopefully you you found this helpful uh, hopefully you'll you'll learn something about my inventory management system that you can use for your own uh, I think it scales pretty well it works pretty well pretty well I haven't had to change anything um, lately and uh, I'm pretty happy with it so if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask uh, I, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments and have a good day thanks for watching